building a 16-segment coaxial collinear array and picking up beacons from aircraft 170 miles away. All that and more, this time on Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Ah. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. Hi, I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. It is. I assume we're playing with antennas today. We are playing with antennas today. We're I went rock climbing this weekend. That's important. It was very. It was important to me because yes. it was awesome and I learned how to rock climb. You know, forget the antennas for a moment. What's new in your life? How are you doing? I'm um, doing good. What's in your heart? What's in my heart? What's in your heart? I want to kill everybody. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. Angry! Like carry up in here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now that we've sidestepped that, we're going to be making an antenna today from scratch because that's yes! so much fun. Yay! We're gonna fun be times! Continuing talking about, we're going to marry some theory with some practical today. We're going to send some code to some other code and make some shit happen. It's going to be awesome. Are you allowed to say that word on. I don't know. Paul <laughs> probably just bleeped it. Anyway. I should probably mention that not all antennas are the same. That's um, true. As we have two different Yagi antennas on the table now, and they are, in fact, different. Um, so what we're all going to be comparing this to today is this tiny antenna that comes with the RTL SDR, which is not necessarily great for all frequencies. True. And we're going to make a better antenna. And when I say better antenna, we're hoping for Better range, Ooh. better clarity. Ooh. Yes. Oh, that'll be cool. Right. I can and track my airplanes and fun things like that. That's what I'm hoping to do Ooh. because um, you're an expert now on picking up ADSB. Oh, yeah. I'm a total expert. And I'm, we I'm figured this would be a great way to test the two things because we're just listening for beacons from airplanes. Mm -hmm. You explained ADSB previous yes. episode. Yep. ADSB Scope and ADSB Sharp, I believe the software is called. And so those planes are just sending out these beacons all the time. Mm -hmm. And right now, with this little guy, we can see planes at what? In Oakland? We can see them in a pr pretty decent range. You, most of them are in Oakland or they're flying um, over like Vallejo, Napa area. So sure. that we can, segment. We can see down to SFO. But so can, I'm wondering, with we a longer one like this, yeah, could, we s could I just zoom out and see all the way down to San yeah. Jose? Can we see all the way down Ooh. to Santa Barbara, Laguna Seca? All the way Seca. up to Petaluma. Um, all the way up to this could be fun. Point Reyes. It's geography on Hack 5, and we're only talking about Welcome California. Welcome to California! <laughs> uh, but I figured first we should probably understand the elements. Probably. The, el the elementals of an antenna. This is in fact the antenna that we've been waiting on that we'll be playing with more next week. Um, and it is yeah. in fact similar to this guy. They are very similar. Can you tell me the difference? So, well, one's longer than the other. Ah, yeah. Oh, Why would length these have are different to do? too. Oh, I and now that, that I understand means. these, okay. So elements of an antenna. So there's this thing called a driven element. Yes. That's number one. Yes. There's a driver. And then there's this thing, uh, which is the driver. Yeah. Right. And then there's this other one called the parasitic element. Yeah. And this is what picks up the energy from the driven element and re-radiates it to to a deflector. And well, we've got two different types directors. of parasitics in this case. We've got a reflector and a director. And in this case, we're actually using, uh, as an example, a Yagi Udin array, as it were. It's Udin. a eye fire or fire eye. I, I don't remember the type of, there's this, like three different types of arrays. But right. this is one type of array where uh, this little reflector here is, this, this is the director, right? Mm -hmm. We can tell because so the cable's going to it. basically it goes, uh, where, wherever the data is coming from, mm -hmm. which is the cable, goes yep. into Sending the, the voltage into there. And this is called the director, mm -hmm. I believe. Yep. And then the director is going to... Oh, sorry. That, that's actually the driver. Driver. Yes. Okay. Right, because these are the directors. Those are the directors. They, they so sit in little director's this chairs. Dri so the, this drives the data. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to recall everything. And then it is driven out this way. But what if it tries to disperse this way? Ah, yes. Well, that's what the reflector is for on the back of it, trying to say, no, 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 EM. You want to go that so way. But there is, of course, going to be still some. This can't reflect all of it. And then it comes down to the front-to-back ratio, right. which is um, 
I interesting. And given the fact that this is a circle like this, mm -hmm. kind of an oval shape, does that mean that it's going to try to radiate out? Yeah, and it's going to have a different. Um, we're, we're, when we actually start going into like Smith charts and actually like writing this out in two D, what it looks like. Remember our example the other day with the balloons. Yes. Um, <laughs> we're actually going to see that the waveform has kind of a shape. And that's what's one of the things that's going to allow us to have our horizontal or our vertical polarizedness ah, cool. of it. Um, and so this is a very good example of a type of antenna that we call a directional antenna. Directional, because it's directed <laughs> in yes. a certain way. Uh, there's other directional antennas. We've got panel antennas. We've got bi-quads. We've got all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. in, 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 there's omni the other major type of antenna would be an omnidirectional. So those would be like the little five dipole. Yeah, one this of guy, these. right? Just yeah. a, a little sticky guy. And so um, dipoles. The one know, that comes with the Wi-Fi pineapple. That's yep. dipole, right? Clover leaves. Uh, here's here's actually a few. There we go. Aha. And so these are fun because they've got um, a really good pattern that kind of goes out and around mm -hmm. most places. And we're actually going to be using this kind of type in an array uh, today when we build our ADSB antenna. Ooh. And that is of the type of coax collinear antenna. And I have oh, to give okay. mad props to Dusan Ballara from ballarad.net for this design. It's really cool. We're basically taking, making an omnidirectional. It's got a great radiation pattern. It's good for seeing like what's on the horizon, like airplanes. Oh, perfect. Um, it's super easy to make. And when I say collinear in geometry, mm -hmm. all I really mean is in one direction, right? So these two dipoles together would go like that. Boom, wow. now we've got a, a 2x collinear, right? Okay. Now if I did that, that, that would not be a collinear. That would be not very good, right? <laughs> <laughs> so essentially just these antennas in a row, okay? And so our coaxial collinear antenna is essentially a simple array of these dipoles, you know, made out of coax, which oh. we're just going to go ahead and string together in a straight line. And in theory, we're actually going to double the amount of, as we double the amount of antennas, right, of, of these elements here in phase, mind you, we'll actually double the amount of gain by a factor of about 3 dB. So that's theory. That's the, th I mean, in practice, there's going to be losses. Uh, I'm going to say this is going to still be pretty good. And in fact, I will mention that we, when we get into the build side of it, antennas, antennas are like code, right? There's a million <laughs> ways to do it. And for every way that there is to do it, there's like 10 guys with a better opinion on, on how it should be done. Put 11, or put 10 antenna engineers into a room, you'll come up with 11 opinions. So <laughs> very, very true. we're going to make an attempt based on um, uh, Dusan's directions and we're going to see how it goes. And then okay. we may follow up with this based on, of course, your comments, because I know that people will be watching this because there's, there is a little bit of conflicting information on the web mm -hmm. as far as like what the best, remember we talked about oh, yeah. the best when antenna? When I was researching it, I saw plenty of different looking antennas. All of them were different. Right. And there's different ways to assemble them. And so there's no like, I don't think there is a best, but we're going to make... So where, how are we going to make it? Well, this is our first antenna. So we're going to be making it the easy hacker way first <laughs> to kind of get our feet wet. Then we're going to read all of your comments, realize that we're idiots, and then we're going to do it again. So <laughs> all I'm saying is this is good stuff, but it is not scripture. But let's just go ahead and uh, dive in, right? Okay to the material. Let's do it. So, um, actually, let me toss these away. We're actually going to be making this out of 75 ohm RG6 coax. Ooh. Uh, okay. Good that looks stuff. very familiar to me. Why, do you have a satellite TV at home? No, but I've seen them before. Right, and so... They use this for installing them. Yeah. I mean, the RG, RG, I mean, RG is kind of like cat. Yeah. You know, you've got like cat five, cat six. Yeah. Um, RG is another kind of specification. It looks similar to cable too. Yeah. A cable TV cable that you're probably used to is RG 58, I want to ah, say. Okay. They all have different values for different things. In fact, they all have uh, different resistance. In this case, we're talking about a okay. 75 ohm. Ohm is just essentially uh, mm. electrical resistance. You know, your resistance is your, what is it? Voltage divided by the current. Oh, and right. so... First, though, before we actually get into chopping this to bits and making but it. But I'm ready. I know you are. And I I'm going to give you this. Yay. Because I trust this. I'm giving you this because I trust you. OK. Thank you. The last thing I ever said on Hack 5. Um, <laughs> but first, 
Let's get into the maths, right? Oh no. Just real quick. More real math. Quick. No, because it's going to apply to today and it's all going to make uh, sense because we won't even know how to right. make this unless we get the right formula. Uh, um, okay, fine. So, wavelength. <laughs> we're familiar with that. We talked about it for the yes. last week or two. Um, we're building a half wavelength antenna. So for that, we're actually going to need to, of course, first know what is the full wavelength of it. And it's pretty easy to figure out because we're making an ADSB antenna. You and remember. ADSB is 1090 megahertz. That's the one. I believe. Yes, and so um, uh, and and we already and know, the, we speed know the speed of light. light, right? In a vacuum, hasn't changed. Right. That not that I recall, and uh, so so wavelength equals the speed of light uh, divided by frequency. Yes, Correct. it would be. I don't know what wavelength is. What W? So it'd be yeah, like yeah, just say W. That sounds good. Sure. W equals C over. F, okay. right? Okay, and so in this case, you know, I, why do I think it's a lambda? Anyway, <laughs> whatever. So our wavelength is going to be, what is it, 299,972 kilometers per second. A lot of people just round up to 300. Divided by, uh, what is it, uh, 1 million, nine, or 1, 1 billion, billion 90, 90 million. million Hertz. hertz. Right. right. And, I, and actually, I should preface it by is it is not a hertz. It is always a hertz. Even if it is one, it is a one hertz. Oh. Yes, because it's a dude's name. Oh. Uh, anyway, <laughs> which Magic. means, so if we do this calculation on uh, 1090 MHZ, right, and we're getting out of the thingy, so we just pull this back just a bit. Hey, look at that. So 1090 megahertz, and then we put that under the speed of light, which I'm totally rounding. Uh, what is that? Km slash seconds. And then this would equal out to uh, essentially 275 millimeters. Millimeters. Okay. Millimeters. So then since this is going to be a half, mm -hmm. uh, what was it called? Half, half wavelength. wavelength. Yep. Uh, then it would be 137.5. I totally just did that in my mind. Almost. <laughs> oh. Almost. Almost. We have to take into uh, account the velociraptor factor. The factor <laughs> of velociraptors. <laughs> um, I have a feeling you meant velocity. It is. It is, in fact, the velocity there. factor. But I feel like velociraptor is more apt in this sense. So what is the <laughs> velociraptor Ve factor? Velo the velocity factor. <laughs> Is sometimes called the uh, it's called the wave propagation speed okay. or the velocity of propagation. So mm. it's the VOP or the VF, however you want to consider it. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying there's a couple of different ways to say it: tomato, tomato, whatever have you. It is essentially the speed of the wave as it travels through our material relative to the speed of light. Because remember, oh. now we said it's really cool that the speed of light doesn't change, right? Right. In vacuum space, radio signals travel at the speed of light, and therefore the velocity factor in a vacuum of space is, well, in this case, since it's a ratio, it's a percentage, it's 100%. Oh. The speed, uh, the velocity factor of the speed of light in space is the speed of light. But that's just 100%. in space, just in a vacuum. So what about here on Earth? <sighs> that's where we the have atmosphere. Yeah, and, like we, and, and we have to take into account that this is made out of copper and it's got all sorts of different materials that have different characteristics. Mm -hmm. So we have to take those into account. And one of which, one, just one of which is the insulation around, uh, in, in our case, our coax cable. And this actually, this insulation is called a dielectric material. And it's called that because it can be polarized by the electric fields. And essentially what all this means is it has a slowing effect on the signal, on the electric oh. signal. So thus, our velociraptor effect, <laughs> or our, our velocity factor, uh, won't be 100% of the speed of light. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, we've got, it, it totally we've got resistance, sense. we've got impedance, yeah. we've got the velocity factor, we've mm -hmm. got so many different things to take into calculation here. And so this is just one of the values that we're gonna throw into our maths. As the rubber hits the road, as it were, because our velocity factor is going to, it's actually going to vary depending on what our transmission cable is. Uh, for instance, a closed cell foam dielectric may have a velocity factor of 90%, while Teflon, for instance, could have one of, I don't know, something like 70. Oh. And this all needs to work into uh, our math as we cut our elements to length. So, so how do you know what this one is? Aha, 
Yes, well, we can find out the velocity factor of our RG6 coax by doing a complex calculation. It's actually pretty easy. The velocity factor, so Vf, is going to equal 1 over the square root of k. Oh, yeah, that's really easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there we go. So what is k? Oh, uh, k, it's uh, relative permittivity. It's also known as the dielectric constant. And it's essentially a ratio of the amount of electric energy that a material can store relative to that of stored in a vacuum of space. Okay. Right, which is why antennas are cooler so. in space. But we're not <laughs> in space. We're here on Earth, so we have to kind of take that into uh, to consideration. So again, since it is relative, what we're talking about is in the vacuum of space, K would be equal to a 1, right? Uh -huh. Whereas Teflon, for instance, would be 2.1. And oh, paper, yeah. which is, I wouldn't say the greatest insulator, but it's not the worst, um, would be 3.85. Okay. It gets worse, though. Really? Why? Yes, because all I need is the air that I breathe. And to get along with you, all right? Um, <laughs> the True. air we breathe is about 1.0005, um, uh, has a, uh, a 1.0005, K, Ooh. or dielectric constant. Okay. As in, it's going to affect our antenna. And yes, it will. Else. And actually, that's not even the case. It's like the decimal points keep going as the atmosphere changes, whether you're on Mount Everest well, I figured or here at sea level. atmosphere would affect it in some way. Right. I mean, this would be so much easier if we could just get rid of the atmosphere already. And so maybe with all the carbon emissions and everything, we can just do away with the ozone layer and just live in a vacuum of space where everything is easier. And that is why next week we will be building our own space shuttle. Yes. And or uh, burning nasty chemicals to rid the Earth of this, this damn atmosphere that's just getting in the way of the signal. Right. <laughs> not sure which one's going to come first, us leaving this so anyway. rock or not having an atmosphere. But anyway, to cut to the chase, as it were, <laughs> you asked me, how do I find out the velociraptor factor or the, the, the velocity <laughs> yes. factor of our cable? Um, well, Google it. Oh, well, that was hard. I know. I'm sorry. I mean, the cable manufacturer, they made the cable, they know what yeah. it is, and they're going to list it. They got a nice little table. And they, they all say, know what it is. Yeah, they're going to call it the velocity of propagation or the VOP. Just look in the label. It's I really want to unwrap is. this. Um, and so uh, for our 75 ohm RG6 mm -hmm. U cable. You Googled it? It's 85%. Okay. Yeah. Now we know. All right. So, so either do the math mm -hmm. <laughs> or read the box. I will just read the box. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. So our antenna element length, we now can figure it out, right? Because we've got the wavelength, we've got our velociraptor factor, and we can now find out how long to cut our elements for our half wave. Yay! Remember, we're making a half wave here. So yes. what we do... Let's cut things. Yes. So we had 275 millimeters. So what we're going to do is say two... Uh, that's a five... Uh, 275, that's math dyslexia for you, millimeters. And then we're going to divide that by 2, okay? And that's going to be equal 137, and then that's cool. So we're going to take 137, and we're going to multiply it by 0 0.85, because remember... So there's our 85%. 85%, and that's going to equal 116. And again, this is millimeters which means ah. that our length should be It should be uh, 116 about, millimeters? Uh, it should be 11 and a half, we'll say, centimeters. Oh, okay. Yes. Wow, that's pretty short. It, well, you know, it's cut to the wavelength. Maybe, yeah. maybe this will be a, a six, but you know, it, it, <laughs> either way, it's close. It's close enough. Right. Okay. Did a little bit of rounding there, as it were. Good job on your rounding. Thanks. I mean, <laughs> and I'm doing that because this is the real world, and it, it doesn't, it, it, for us, that 85% figure from the manufacturer, it's a guideline. I mean, we don't have the precision equipment to test the cable and know all of that stuff, nor do we even have the precision equipment right. to cut it to those precise lengths. We have a snubs and one of these. <laughs> so, there we go. Let's we'll we see what happens. We will make Hopefully I won't break that. a finger or anything right. like that. Now, I know we're a glossing finger. over a bunch of factors here, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff that we will eventually get into as far as impedance and bizarre and matching and things of that nature. But 
seeing that this is Hack 5, we're hackers and we want to get out in the field and get some packets, let's just get to it. Yeah? Yeah? Yes. Okay, we're going to be back in a quick break. But when we get back, Shannon has soldering iron and a knife. Who knows what could happen? I know what could happen. So I've given it a lot of thought and it turns out it doesn't matter if you're a fan of RG6 or RG58, when that killer idea hits, you need to snag a domain name and web hosting fast. And get this, with Domain.com's quick domain discovery system and their easy checkout process, you can have your website up and running in no time. We are huge fans of Domain.com because they're affordable, reliable, easy to use, they're totally active on social media. You can tweet them at Domain.com and see why it's a really fun place to do business. And get this, the guys over at Domain.com, huge fans of Hack5, they want to hook you up. So if you use the coupon code HAK5 at checkout, you're going to get an extra 15% off. When you think domain names, think domain.com. It's time for the trivia question of the week. And this week's trivia question is, what is the largest spacecraft to perform an autonomous Earth orbit and re-entry? And the answer, as Darren knows, of course, is the Death Star. No, I'm just kidding. It's called the Buran, and it's Russian, Bjorn. I believe. Bjorn? Something like that. Russian. Bjorn. It's Russian. <laughs> Bjorn, Buran, we'll take all of them. Why not? Now, this week's trivia question is, what effect did the turbo button have on early personal computers? That sounds kind of awesome. If you have the answer, answer it over at hak5.org slash trivia. Good luck. Try to win some swag. Have fun. We're back and I am so excited for this part. We've already got two elements of our antenna ready to go, two element array, and we are creating a coaxial, what is it called again? A collinear. Collinear coaxial co array. Array. Yes. Antenna. It will be fantastic. So we are going to have to put 16 of these together. That's the idea is we can we could do two. I mean, we could already just you know, put a connector on the end of this, plug but it into But it's rather small. Oh, well, it's not the length of the, <laughs> it's the wave length. I think it does matters. kind of matter in this it's case scenario. It's not the wave scenario. length that matters, it's how you use it. Okay. Yes. Well, why don't we get straight <laughs> into creating this antenna? All right, so as we've talked about, we already know that our elements need to be 11.6 centimeters right. or 116 centimeters. And uh, the way that our elements are going to join, and I'm going to show you here by disassembling this guy, <coughs> is... Electric tape! Yay! Yay! Non-conductivity-ness! So we have these two uh, elements right here, mm -hmm. and wow, when I pulled that, it actually pulled the center element out. Did you <laughs> see that? Whoops. That's pretty fantastic. Let me see if I can just push that. Ooh, that did not like <laughs> to go. Well then, we'll just use these for demonstration purposes, but essentially what we're going to end up with is the center part here that actually has our uh, dielectric, our insulator, right? This is, should be a hundred, or I'm sorry, 116. And you guys can't see. So your screen, well. your screen says around 116 once you get the, get it there. What is this right. thing called? Oh, this is a digital caliper, digital right? Caliper. Okay. And so let me zero it again. Uh, and this is basically going to allow me to get more precise measurements than I would. You can see as I, there we go. Let me tilt it in a direction where you can see it. There we go. That is uh, 19 centimeters. That's or millimeters. That's 20 millimeters, and that's it goes cool. to two tenths, which is really fantastic because we can actually get really particular here when we it's get. It's very to, exact. Yes, we want to get to 116, I believe, was our measurement. Here we go. 112. One, oop, went past it. 116.5. Come on. And this is where you need really. Oh, really? 115.99? <laughs> so close, close enough. <laughs> oh, okay. Right there. It's not going to matter because we're just coarsely cutting so this So that over. is so 116.06. The length of one of these guys. Right. Well, it will be when we start cutting them properly. Right. Yes. And so this is actually, as we used to call, say back east, close enough for government work. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and yeah, so let's go ahead and start cutting these guys up. We want to leave about two and a half centimeters of the copper in the center of it exposed because what we will end up doing is we're going to take this one as an example 
And we're going to take a little bit of electric tape. You want to cut me a square of that guy? Yeah, sure. And we're going to plug this guy into that guy so that the center piece here, the center copper, is going to slide into the aluminum uh, sheath around here. And the center of this one is going to slide into its buddy's aluminum sheath. And that is how we're going to create our coaxial. It is going to be alternating half wavelength uh, elements. And so, Paul, if you want to get in on this, what I'm doing here is I've got my electric tape around that first piece. And I'm going to go ahead and shove this guy through in that same area. There we go. And so they're not touching. I've made sure that I don't have any like strands of the outside element touching the center element. Um, and so now I will just go ahead and shove this guy. Oops, I guess the longer one first. This is just an example one. We'll get more precise here in a minute. So the longer one. Okay, there we go. And if you look real tight on there, what you can see is ah, so this neither of your copper cables are touching each other. Nope. The, but but the copper to aluminum on that guy and the copper aluminum to that guy. And when you say aluminum, you're talking about the inside of the outside jacket. Right. So if you were to take this completely apart, in fact, I believe with this, I should be able to trim off uh, just the right amount. Let's see. Put that to there. Squeeze that. Pull this guy around a little bit. Peel that off. Okay. So what you'll actually see here, oh, my multimeter is yelling at me, uh, is we have this bit here. That's our center, right? And that's made out of copper. Okay. And then oh. we also have uh, this white piece right there, that's the closed cell foam that we were talking about. That's our dielectric, right? right? And then surrounding that, we actually have, um, well, we have a couple of things, but they're all made out of aluminum, whether it's a mesh or just a sheet. This is uh, essentially aluminum foil that is coating this, and it is for, um, that is to prevent interference, and it's a shield. However, okay. in our case, we're going to use it to go ahead and alternate. Uh, and so what will happen is we're going to create all these nodes, and then the more nodes, we're going to have more gain, and it's going to be really cool. Awesome. Um, now, if we were doing this all pro and stuff, perhaps we would be um, cutting them like this and then soldering these guys together. Right. But we're not going to do that today. But we're just going to do it the fun way? No. The hacker way? Yeah, well, we're just, for <laughs> our, our very first antenna, we're just going to kind of scratch build this all quick and dirty. Okay. And then as we get better at this, we're going to get more precise. But uh, for this one, let's just take it easy, enjoy it, and I guarantee it will be better than coating yourself in aluminum foil and standing like this. <laughs> Wait, you've never done that before? I thought everybody <laughs> does that. That's yeah. what I do. That's good stuff. That's All right, time. so let's cut our 116 millimeter pieces. Okay. And uh, start stripping. All right. And you've got tape galore Wait, going who's on. Who's stripping? Is that you're stripping? You're stripping. I'm, I'm not stripping. I'm going to strip? Yeah. Okay. Okay. RG6 stripping. All right. Got it. Cool. Here we go. Here we go. So here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, why are we doing 16 of these instead of just one really long piece of cable? Well, because each of these is tuned to in this case, 1090 megahertz, as we just did all the math ah. to figure out. And it's just, it's kind of like this. Okay, so this is a 900 megahertz Yagi, right? But that's an element, that's an element, that's an element, that's I an see. element, that's an element. So you, and these are all is tuned considered to an it. element. Yes, and each of these elements are tuned to it. As you can see, like this 900 one yeah. is going to be bigger because of wavelengths, as we've learned, than, for example, this Yagi. And you see how they're, they're smaller elements because yeah. they're tuned to a higher frequency. This oh. is 2.4 gigahertz. This is 900 megahertz. So almost three times size difference there. Okay. Right. And um, I w there's math involved. Yeah. But more elements, the higher the gain, things are going to get better. Okay. And so by putting these elements together, it's what makes it called an array. And um, that way we can... Um, essentially, they're going to share the load, okay. right? We're going to get more gain because each of these is going to have a, uh, is going to receive and share it, mm -hmm. essentially, and not just produce heat and stuff. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. There's a more technical answer, but that's what I got off the cuff. That's basically what it is. Yeah. All right, got it. So he here are our 16. You know what? We need to make this one right here. Uh, oh. This is actually 
uh, what's going to go to our feed line. Yeah, and okay. Our feed that line makes is sense. what's going to go to our radio, and our radio it's going to go to our computer, and our computer is okay. going to tell us what the airplanes are. So we'll do this last one here, and this will be the first one in our strand. And I'm not sure exactly if I should cut it. I think you should cut it longer. Or, well, right, but okay. So there's actually conflicting stuff out there right now. Um, there, some people say that your first two should be quarter wavelength and then go to alter, a 16 alternating half wavelength and then go to a, a final quarter wavelength and that you're supposed mm -hmm. to um, uh, close the circuit at certain points. We're going to see which one does better. So let's just do it this way and then find out. Okay. And so what I'm going to do now that I have my first two pieces put together, you can see what we have is our copper here touching our aluminum and vice versa. So I'm going to go ahead and test continuity on both ends of these copper. And I shouldn't hear anything because they are not, in fact, touching. But holding the copper on this end and touching the aluminum, we can see that those oh. are. And so it's very important that we go ahead and do this test each time we put together another section because we don't want our circuit closing in the middle of the thing because then we'd have to go back and find out which one was the culprit. So a beep is good or a beep is bad? Well, I'm on my fifth, so that's good. It's every other that I don't. And oh. So this is why you make your array in two, four, 8, 16, 32. I see. Yes. Okay, all mine are done. I'll start cleaning them up. Thank you. Making sure nothing's touching the middle. Um, where's that little? The tool that it's in my hand right now? Yeah, that. Yeah, here you go. Thanks. There we go. Through the magic of television, we have a coaxial linear. Actually, it's not linear right now because we're kind of curving it. So we'd be like, ooh, ooh, isn't that, isn't that nice. Okay. So nice. Cool. And what's great here is we Took can a while. test for continuity, and we shouldn't hear anything if I touch to the center here and you touch to the center there. No. Awesome. Okay. Sweet. Touch to the center again. Just want to make sure. Yep. Great. Okay. Cool. And so. Uh, finally, what we need here is this is a F-type. No, sorry, this is an N-type. N-type? There's a bunch of different connector types. There's a connector type for everything. I forget what one this one's called, but on the side of your, SM, or, uh, the, on the side of your um, RTL SDR dongle, mm -hmm. uh, it's not IPEX. Anyway, there's a million different connectors for everything. But essentially, I have a pigtail here that's going to allow ah. me to convert this into SMA and on the other end here, I have an SMA as well. So SMA male to SMA female. I can tell because it's pin to no pin. Watch out for that RP stuff. And then we can take our, is it N or F? I want to say it's N. I can't remember right now. I'd have to look it up. But so now, screw that in. Okay. I can screw this guy into here. And huzzah! So we now we have, have an antenna. We have an antenna and a radio. Look at that! And this isn't going to work so well if we're just trying to like... No, no, no as, as Toss it up in the air. Oh, I've got something for that, actually. Oh, do you? Yeah, Paul ran out to the hardware store right ah. before we shot the show so we could get one of these. That works. Yes. <laughs> and so this Awful long. is quite simply, uh, what is this, like a 12-foot pole? Yeah. Yeah. And so these are all like, what, 116 millimeters. There's 16 of them. I forget what exactly it comes out to. It comes out to almost... Six feet. Okay. Like just shy of six feet. Okay. And so what we're going to do now is we will run this guy through here. We're going to plug it on both ends with some electric tape, seal it up all nice for um, for the weather. In fact, Paul went and got some nice little end caps ah, that we might just drill through. Um, and then we will go ahead and take it out to the field. And yes. what I'd like to do is here, uh, I'd like to just go ahead and put it up high above the tree line. Let's just try to get it 
a uh, nice line of sight to the horizon okay. and see how well this, this does. And then we can compare it to awesome. the little dinky antenna that it comes with. Okay, oh, cool. Exciting. All right, cool. Well, I we'll, hope it works. <laughs> yeah, let's just take a quick break. Welcome back to what we like to call a continuity error. Yay, we changed our clothes. Just like that, <laughs> just for you guys. Cause it's not the previous next week with the spies. You know, it's actually kind of apt that we're getting into electromagnetic fields and stuff because we are True. truly transcending space and time at this moment. Oh, we are. It's mm. kind of like having a, your own personal portal. Mm -hmm. So basically, this show is very long, so yes. we decided to split it into two parts. Because we have some epic stuff coming in part two next week, which then allows us to do better stuff for that. And then the following week with even, I, I have now a string of like six follow-up awesome segments where you yes. get out of the studio a lot. So. We really want to hear your feedback because there are a million ways to make antennas and we want to hear what kind you guys like, what, uh, you know, what has been your experience with these Realtek dongles or whatever other SDRs you guys are rocking. Mm -hmm. uh, we're building some stuff for, what, 130 megahertz and some other, yes. you know, wavelengths and whatnot. Boats! So, hey! The, Out yeah, there's, there! There's, there's, see, <laughs> good stuff. And then drones, oh, which so do exciting. not have ADS-B beacons. But right. But anyway. I guess that about wraps up this episode though. This does, that's gonna conclude this programming for this week. So you can all go away now. There's nothing to see here. So Please mean. move along. Also, I want to remind you about our San Francisco Bay Area Hacker Brunch. Come on out, September 6th, we're going to be having mimosas and talking software defined radio and checking out some really cool projects. So RSVP over at hack5.org slash brunch. This is gonna be a good time. Of course, definitely check out hakshop.com. That's where you can find all of our really cool toys and our, even our own little SDR dongles. Super fun times. And good stuff. And of course, uh, you can follow us at hack5.org slash follow. It's all the places where the socially socials with your thing with the internet. And email us over at feedback at hak5.org. Or and let us know yeah. about your favorite types of antennas and which ones you like to make. Large tracks of Yagi Udin arrays. Oh, Lord. With that, I'm going to say my name is Shannon Morse. I'm Darren Kitchen. Trust your techno lust. <laughs>so strange with your huge tracks of yogis. Yeah, so we basically made it five millimeters more, not five centimeters more. <laughs> oh man, I'm so glad we've got tons of this cable. Me too. All right. Your yogi is so huge. <laughs> what? Hey, NASA once smashed a rover into Mars because it didn't know the difference between inches and, and centimeters. <laughs> I feel bad for nah. Uden. He doesn't get the, you oh, know, I know, he doesn't get guy. the love. Poor yeah. guy. It's, it's like being Shannon Morse on the Darren Kitchen <laughs> show. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Watch out when you sleep. Uh. <laughs> <laughs>